Uganda is going nuclear. President Yoari Museveni has announced that Uganda is going to be the third African country with nuclear power plants. In a very pro-African deal with the China National Nuclear Corporation, Uganda will have its first nuclear power plant operational by 2031, with several more plants in the works for the upcoming two decades. This is a big blow to Western influence in Africa. So let's talk about how this deal will work, what this means for African businesses, why it took so long, and why this could signal the end of the West's domination and exploitation of Africa. As the West has given up on nuclear power to pursue what they refer to as renewable energy, China has in the past 20 years stepped up, hiring the best nuclear engineers from around the world and creating a nuclear power manufacturing program that is the envy of the entire world. China is willing to work out favorable deals with friendly countries where they will manage the construction of the nuclear plants, work out financing so that the country buying the plant can grow without being strained too much financially, and even train native workers to work alongside the Chinese to gain the skills needed to be self-sufficient. The initial deal for Uganda is reported at $9 billion, with much of the financing being supported by the energy production itself. The fuel will be sourced from Uganda, where they have a rich supply of uranium. These reactors will use the most modern technology and produce a lot of energy. Um, to put this in perspective, Uganda currently has 1,500 megawatts of installed generating capacity. At full operational capacity, the first Ugandan nuclear power plant located north of Kampala will produce 2,000 megawatts, which is enough power for two to three million Western households. Let's do the math. Uganda has a population of 41 million people and roughly 8.9 million households, meaning three to four nuclear reactors could theoretically power the entire country at Western living standards. If you are a manufacturer, your ears should be perking up right now. Clean and reliable energy means that you will be able to manufacture in Uganda without worrying about power interruptions. And since nuclear energy is practically carbon free, it means that companies that add value in Uganda will be able to manufacture and sell to the European countries without having to buy carbon credits from the Westerners. Outside of raw resources, the biggest bottleneck to mass production is reliable energy sources. Do you really want to manufacture in Europe as they shut down their nuclear power plants during an energy crisis? Or would you rather manufacture in a country using the exact manufacturing model China followed to become the most powerful economy in the world over the past 30 years? But you might ask, with nuclear energy making so much sense, why did it take so long for Africa to cut this kind of deal? Well, the West has for decades used diplomacy to undermine nuclear energy in Africa, uh, slandering countries that wanted reliable energy as only wanting nuclear technology to produce weapons, or even claiming that Africans were too incompetent to manage nuclear technology. Not only were these accusations baseless, but it was ironic given the source of the accusations. The West would prefer that African countries start buying Western-developed green energy and to purchase Western carbon credits. And China is really throwing a wrench into the West strategy with deals like what they just cut with Uganda. Of course, China is not doing this for charity, but China is also not looking to exploit the Africans or undermine their culture. That's why Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and several other African countries are rumored to be in similar talks. Let's be clear, the West is not happy about this deal. They know that China is essentially cutting them out of Africa piece by piece. Nevertheless, the deal has been uh, cut, and one more chain that has tied Uganda to Western influence has been broken. And I think this is another piece to Africa becoming a manufacturing superpower in the upcoming decades. But what do you think? Is President Museveni of Uganda right to risk upsetting Western powers by cutting this nuclear deal with China? Why or why not? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if this video has provided value to you, give me a like or a follow. That really helps out my channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video.